That was a mild bummer. Drinking milk is not enough apparently. We need vitamin D to absorb the calcium. So now, instead of staying under the shade when taking Coco out, say hi to the camera, Coco. I'll start basking with Coco to produce more vitamin D. But I had several concerns. What's the best time to sunbathe? How long should I stay under the sun? And won't I get skin cancer? Studies found the best time to get vitamin D is around noon, when the sun is at its highest. In fact, sunbathing early morning or late afternoon to get vitamin D increases the risk of skin cancer. It sounds counterintuitive, but there is good science behind this recommendation. First, we need to understand that not all sunlight is good for producing vitamin D. The light spectrum reaching the Earth's surface from the sun is between 100 nanometers and 1 millimeter light rays. These are ultraviolet, visible, and infrared radiation. One of the first steps in making vitamin D requires UV light, specifically the part of UV light called UVB. When UVB hits our skin, it transforms 7-dehydrocholesterol to pre-vitamin D3, which our body will eventually convert into the active form of vitamin D. Without UVB, we can forget about synthesizing vitamin D3 and instead would need to acquire it from other sources. Now, most UVB coming from the sun is absorbed by the ozone layer. So depending on the angle of entry of the rays, the distance traveling through the ozone layer may be longer or shorter to the point that at some times of the day, even when there is sunlight, there is not enough UVB reaching the Earth's surface to help us make vitamin D3. For example, let's say you live in India and it's early morning. At this time of the day, the rays enter at an angle where they must travel longer distances through the ozone layer to reach India so most UVB is being absorbed. But as the Earth rotates, the distance of the sunlight traveling through the ozone layer shortens, and more and more UVB passes through, with the highest intensity of UVB peaking at around 12 o'clock. This is the time of the day when we can get the maximum UVB exposure. As the day goes on, less and less UVB reaches the people in India. The amount of UVB radiation reaching the Earth's surface is not only affected by the time of day and the atmospheric ozone, but also by the season of the year, clouds, altitude, and latitude. In fact, people living at latitudes above 37 degrees north or below 37 degrees south can't produce vitamin D from the sun because all the UVB is absorbed by the ozone layer. But if you do live below 37 degrees latitude, how much vitamin D can you expect to make at different times of the day? Well, in a study in India where they exposed 7-dehydrocholesterol to sunlight at different hours of the day, they found that at around noon, production of pre-vitamin D3 was 70 times more effective than at 9 a.m. A similar study in Saudi Arabia found no detectable levels of pre-vitamin D3 before 8 a.m. or after 5 p.m. So going out early in the morning doesn't help produce vitamin D. UVB rays can cause sunburns, increasing the risk of melanoma and other types of skin cancer. Here's the cool part about our bodies. No matter the skin color, we make vitamin D faster than we get sunburns. Well, there is a caveat. You need to expose more of your skin so that you produce the necessary vitamin D faster to avoid getting sunburned. If you're only exposing your face and hands, then the window of time between producing enough vitamin D and getting sunburned decreases significantly. But why is it not recommended to expose ourselves to the sun early in the morning or later in the afternoon and just take our time making that vitamin D? That's because we also need to consider UVA levels. Unlike UVB, UVA levels decrease much less and remains higher during most part of the day. They are not affected as much by the angle of entry and can pass more easily through the Earth's atmosphere, clouds, and glass. It even penetrates deeper into our skin. So regardless of whether the sun is over your head or at 40 degrees angle, you will still be getting high levels of UVA. UVA's shorter wavelengths can still cause sunburns, and they can also cause cancer. 
If you want to get vitamin D in that early morning or late afternoon, you would have to spend longer amounts of time getting those UVB rays, which means being exposed to more UVA rays, increasing the risk of sunburns and skin cancer. Instead, you can go out for lunchtime sunlight and spend just a few minutes absorbing those UVB rays. Then the amount of UVA rays you expose yourself to is much less, decreasing the risk of skin cancers. The time someone should spend under the sun to get vitamin D depends on latitude, time of the day, skin color, season of the year, and how cloudy the day is. A good rule of thumb is to spend half the time it would take for you to get a sunburn. And preferably to get those UVB rays between 10 a.m. and 2 to 3 p.m., which has the optimal UVA-UVB ratio to decrease chances of getting skin cancer. If you know that you will spend longer than the required time to get vitamin D, make sure to wear sunscreen, even if it is a cloudy day, to protect yourself from the UVB and UVA rays. Producing vitamin D from the sun is not as simple as just going out and exposing ourselves to sunlight for a specific period of time, to the point that the Skin Cancer Foundation does not recommend producing vitamin D from sunlight due to the significant health risks, which makes sense since it is easy to do it wrong. What I would suggest is for you to check the sun exposure guidelines provided by your government and other organizations, and then double check with your dermatologist, since some of the guidelines may not always be up to date with the current science. If you want to help this channel, the best way is to share this video. See you in the next video.